Welcome inside the Wells Fargo Center. The Ottawa Senators and the Philadelphia Flyers here in Pennsylvania are starting goaltenders tonight. At the Ottawa end of the ice, it is the Leonard. Yes, sir, Robin Leonard. You know, he's won the last three games. He has started allowing only four goals. And Robin Leonard right now, his seventh start of the season. At the other end of the rink, uh, you've got Mason, who has been a very, very solid goaltender for the Philadelphia Flyers. Steve Mason, as you will look, he catches with the right hand. Something to keep in mind for the Ottawa Shooters. Maybe it'll make a difference. <laughs> well, it is a different look. The number yeah. of righties in the league is very, very small. And general hockey society, very small. It is a different look for the Shooters. As we get open and underway right away to the line and in come the Flyers to the corner. Here's Voracek coming in, backhander. And the save is made by Leonard as Voracek. Thought he was going to dip to the front, but the backhand stayed in the forehand. Tries the other side, centering the puck. It's knocked down and back out to center. Here comes Bobby Ryan. Goes wide. Here's Turris. Fires it in. Along the boards. Panther puts it back. Side of the net. Turris couldn't get it to go. Back to the point. Here's Mathot. Dumps it to the corner. Here's Ryan now. Ryan. Back to the line. Tries to go across to Carlson. That's knocked down. Carlson puts Hartnell into the boards. Puck comes free. And it's dumped back to the line by Turris. Ottawa will pull out and change. You can expect to have a very good start by the Philadelphia Flyers. They're trying to gain back their fans. The record at home, not very good. Three and seven. But now they're on a beginning of a three-game homestand. They want to change things. Offside is the call. That gives us a moment to get to our keys to the game. Brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of the NHL. Well, I don't know if that's exactly what they use, but the Flyers want to boot the Boo Birds. I tell you what, they have been booing this hockey team and should and 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 for good reason. Three and seven on home ice. They want to get that changed. And for the Ottawa Senators, well, the key they too need a strong start. After a small disagreement, Braden Shen earns himself a high sticking ball. So very early, not even a minute into this game, Ottawa goes to the power play. Carlson puts it to the corner. On the board, Spezza takes it off the wall, wheels it back to Carlson. Carlson slips it across, Mafat. Mafat low, sends it to the net, knockdown, puck springs back wide. And off the boards, Couturier sends it back out to center. Carlson leads the rush back up ice again. Here's Carlson. Fires it hard along the glass into the zone. McCall it first on it. Takes contact from Team in, but holds onto the puck. Anchor being knocked to the ice by Colburn. That allows the puck to come free and the Flyers to clear it. Well, the first thing you want to keep in mind when you're on the power play is that you have an extra man. So the puck should be in a position where you're outmanning the opposition. Down the board, two stokes. Gets it across, Carlson. Carlson, back to Phillips. Phillips has it hop on him. Lays the puck to the corner. Spencer for a quick shot, save is made. Mason gets a piece of that Conacher shot. Here's Phillips now. Wanders in, drops it to the corner. Only one man back. Carlson, back to Spezza. Phillips gets back to his spot. There's a shot off the post. Jason Spezza with a wrist shot that beats Mason but can't beat the post. You know, connacher has got to be given a lot of credit because he stood in there. Tiemann throws one in. It's gloved down by Leonard and forces the face off of Couturier right there. Well, the reason I mentioned Conacher is that he was very effective, I felt, on two very good plays on the power play. The first, he's there right in front of the net. Little poor coverage by the Flyers. He gets a good shot on goal. And again, Conacher is right there. I'm sure Mason did not see the puck coming. He only heard it hit the goal post. And that was a thank you you heard by Mason. Sanders' final rush with the man advantage. Here's Mufat to the line, lays it to the corner, goes to chase it himself. Mufat knocks it down, back of the net, can't find the handle. Colburn, and the puck is chopped back down ice. By Gustafson. Back to five on five now, it's Bobby Ryan. Down to the flyer line and then puts the puck to the corner, gets around Shin. Gustafson plays it to the corner, down it, back to 
defense partner. And Shen. On the board, Dustin to center. Here's Hart. Lobs the puck into the Ottawa, and down he goes in to get it. Puts it back to the net. And he runs into the backside of Le Cavalier, and that sends him spilling to the ice. Out to center. Rink wide pass intended for Grant. Bounces off a couple of sticks. Grant finally ends up getting control off the glass and into the Philadelphia end. Quickly, it's swatted back out to center. Cowan, the driver, driver. Is it Banajad? Doesn't quite get to center as he dumps the puck in. This is way back. Here's Gustafson now, trying to slingshot around his own goal. Out to center. Fires the puck deep inside. It's a weird bounce off the corner, back to the next driver. Drives a tip it by Braden Shin. Simmons comes through the hole with the puck. Here's Simmons back at the point, tries to drop it there for straight, but instead gave it away. Off the boards, the puck is cleared out. Greening tries to chase it down. Grossman fires it back to the Ottawa line. And here's Driver. Dumps the puck down to the zone. Neal, bouncing puck, wheels it back in front. And game 800, as Sean mentioned, for Chris Neal. That was dumped down inside the Ottawa zone. Runner to the corner. Back the other way. Sanders trying to come out the other side as the puck is tipped along the boards. Neal can't get it out. And now again back in the corner. He's Borbieski. Matt Reed piles him into the boards. And the puck is flipped back out to center. Through the neutral zone. Here's Reed with it now. Grew up a Joe Sackett fan. I was hoping that Hartner wouldn't be here by the time he made the NHL because Hartner has the number that he wanted. To the line, here's Ryan. Ryan, no play, sends a weak shot in, it's deflected on the way there. Borachek picks it up. Back out to center he comes, to the line and in. Giroux plays it to the corner, here's McCarthy. That comes off a skate, back to the point. Luke Shin throws it to the net, easily knocked away by Lennon. That was hacked back to the line, but not out. Carlson couldn't get it out of the zone. And the again, feeds it. Goes off the stick of McCarthy all the way back down ice. This will be an icing call. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. You know, folks, 800 games for Chris Steele is quite amazing. Not only the fact that he has played it with all of one franchise, the Ottawa Senators. You see the penalty minutes. Well, at the moment, amongst active players in the NHL, he is far and away the most penalized player in the NHL. That has to do with longevity, and that has to do with this guy does his job every night. Through traffic, shot is knocked down on the way to the net. Flyers buzzing off the head of Leonard. Down he just banks one in. Here's Torres out to center. That's inside the zone. Leaves it there. Ryan cutting the net. His shot save is made. Bobby Ryan goes hard to the net. And that change of gears seemed to fool the Flyer defense. You know, that's why you've got to give Bobby Ryan the puck as soon as you get him in stride. Because he can make those plays that you just don't expect. He's terrific one-on-one, one-on-two, -on -one, one -on and maybe even one-on-three. He needs the puck early. Implied pass, he goes off the stick of Grossman, out of play. Bobby Ryan charging the net, but still scoreless here in period number one. Welcome back. Community Hockey brought to you by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. As proud supporters of kids' community hockey teams across Canada, Scotiabank wants to hear how your team is impacting or giving back to your community. Tag your stories and photos using hashtag ScotiaHockey for a chance to be recognized on an upcoming Senators broadcast. All right, thank you very much, Sean. Face off just outside the flyer line. In a long conversation between Eric Greiber, referee, I'm not sure if they're just renewing old acquaintances. He and Paul Dvorsky have a long chat. I don't think Paul Dvorsky ever refereed any BU games, did you? <laughs> well, actually, no, interesting. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Yeah. Interesting today, this morning, after the morning skate, the, uh, the people who run the building here, actually, not the broadcasters, but the people who run the building for the big screen, 
wanted to do on-camera interviews with Griba and Eric Condra because uh, Philadelphia will be hosting the Frozen Four this year, the championship of college hockey in the United States. And of course, he played for BU and played in the Frozen Four. And Eric Condra, who played for Notre Dame, played in the Frozen Four. Here's Reed with the shots. Loose puck just trickles wide of the net. The Churier came in and had a wide open net after that Matt Reed shot and couldn't bury it, and he's not happy. Well, he. You expect that a defenseman will get a stick on you, and that's exactly what Carlson did and foiled the attempt at the open net. Supposing he thought there should have been an interference. Or yeah, he was, well, yeah, yeah, he looked at the referee. And oh! Maybe disgusted face. <laughs> oh, that's what you get. He hit him. <laughs> Flyers now trying to work it out of their own zone. Too much referee involvement already. Here's Reed trying to find the puck. Finally does as Condor gets Reed's stick in the face. Trick is back to Lennon. In behind the net. Driver now switching sides with Cowan. And they begin the breakaway. Here's Zabanajad at center. Long lead pass down to the line. Condra playing his wrong side tonight as both he and Zabanajad are right shots. And Grant is taken down forcefully in the corner. Back to the point. Cowan with a shot. It's blocked. Drive it back to pack up, pick up the loose puck. Fires it off the boards, back down to the flyer end. We pass through the neutral zone. At center. Up is guided down to the line by Hall. Lead pass intended for tourists. Too far for him. Icing waved off. Grossman back to pick it up in his own end. Grossman tries to reverse the puck, put it right into the shin pads of. Kyle Turris. Braden Shen out to center. His pass knocked down. But he picks up the rebound. Shen to the line. Cross ice. Simmons back to Shen. Moving in. His shot. Blocked in the way to the net by Mathot. Really good stick by Mathot there. Shen's been hot scoring of late. The Cavalier at the other side. Shen couldn't get the stick on it. Diving to get it out. He does. MacArthur gets it to center. Can't get by the long reach of Grossman. Though. Tips it. The Cavalier. Couldn't get to the spot where Bobby Ryan was going. Tried to get back and cover that spot. Here's Shen now. Flicks off his stick. Back down to the line. Carlson back to get it. Carlson. Round the board. Sticks all over him. And out to center now. Zach Smith to the line. Puck is shovel to the line. Gloved ahead but not out of the zone by Tiemann. He's now trying to get out of their own zone. Here's Voracek. Voracek throws it through the middle, goes off the skate of Neal to the corner. Hartnell first on it. He and Borowiecki meet in the corner, and Hartnell goes down. Out the center. Neal didn't get the pass cleanly from Green as it hit the skate of Voracek on the way there. Puck comes off the stanchion. Neal puts it back to the net. Off the boards. Puck is cleared back to the line. And out the center now. Here's Hartnell through the middle. Pass is tipped in by Giroud. That whole line peels off in a chain. Phillips. Waits for the Ottawa change to wrap up. Ten gone, ten to go here in period one. Still waiting for the first goal of this game. Conacher to the line. Dives to try and slap it to the corner. Does. Here's Spezza off the boards. Tries to feed the point but couldn't connect with Driva. And it goes all the way back down ice. Pretty good eye because he saw Driva come off the bench. And was going for that open lane and just didn't connect. There's Spezza floating it ahead. McCulloch inside the line. Whiffs on his shot. Puck to the corner. Cleared around the boards by Colburn. Downey now sends the puck out to center. On the wing and in. Here's Reed. Breaks on. Looks for the wide man. Couldn't get it to Downey. Centers the puck. Knocked down in front of the net. Quickly out to center. Everybody else on a change as Conacher just floats the puck down to the Flyers' zone. That played by Downey trying to get the puck to the front of the net, but good coverage by the center. There's a lot of white jerseys right in front of Robin Leonard. Conacher knocks the puck free. Zabanajad trying to take advantage of it. Strike gets in his way and a nice defensive play from the former Islander. Here's Grossman turning back. Off the center, puck is tipped ahead. And in the neutral zone now. Voracek throws it to the line. Here's Hartnell trying to come down the wing. Centers the puck. It's knocked down. Giroux with a weak shot. Couldn't get outside of Grant to get the good forehand away. Puck is cleared to the line and back out by Mathot. Again, another good forward defensive play in the defensive zone by Grant. Here's Hartnell again. Seems speedier after his recent haircut. 
<laughs> the Fox. He pass off the stick of tourists picked up by Simmons. Gustafson again. Long lead pass. Wide side. Braden Shen picks it up. Orvietsky gets a piece of him. Turris goes in to try and help. Back to the point. It comes Gustafson with a shot. Pad safe. Loose puck. Back in front. Shen turns. Fires. Misses wide. The Cavalier ties up a stick. There's a shot that misses from Simmons. Back to the point. Luke Shen gets there to hold it in. Along the boards. Phillips ties up Simmons. Puts away with one there. Centering pass by LeCavalier misses everybody and trickles back out to center and down to the flyer end. The Flyers are doing what they're doing in practice. They're just getting all the pucks to the front of the net. Get the puck there and sooner or later one of your teammates will go there. Back at center. Colin Green dumps the puck in. Mason slows it down. And that just puts Colburn in the train track. That's not trying to dig it out. Now Simmons out the other way. Here's Simmons. That Simmons floats it up high in the air and up into row three. And that is going to be a penalty. Senators go to the power play when we come back. The Couturier had his chance. They couldn't get it to the open net. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Simmons for the Philadelphia Flyers in the penalty box. This is a maddening one for any player. He's just trying to get the puck outside the zone, but because he's inside his own blue line and it goes over the glass, he's penalized for delay of game. Now the Ottawa Senators, their second opportunity here to try and get something going on a much maligned power play of late. Carlson to the line. Taken down, but gets it to the wing. Spets it with a shot. That's knocked down by Mason. Puck trickles back in front. Backhander. McCullough couldn't get it by Mason's leg. Here's Mathot. Back of the net. Conacher couldn't hold it in. He was hung up, and the Flyers bang it back down ice. I don't know if it's Jason Spetzer or not, but for Steve Mason, that's twice he has lost the puck after a Spetzer shot. Larson to the line. Throws it wide. Mathot let it go. Clearing attempt failed. Second one. Successful. Braden Colburn just bangs it back down ice and puts it on net. Here's Carlson now. Minute gone, minute to go. Inside the line. Here's MacArthur cutting in. His shot right on. Save is made. Loose puck. Shoveled back down ice by Luke Chen. Well, maybe he didn't think there was a lot of puck support after the MacArthur shot, but the fact is, is that there was a line change going on. Tourist to the line with speed breaks in. As he was in the shooting motion, he's pickpocketed, and the puck cleared back down ice once again, and once again making the defensive play in his own zone was Luke Shane. Rose Hill, Shen, and Clark MacArthur, all former Leaf teammates. Puck is cleared back down ice now, 25 seconds to go in the Ottawa power play. Now Carlson goes off the ice, surprises me. There's still 25 seconds left against the Columbus Blue Jackets. He played almost every minute of power play time, meaning that your shifts are two minutes long. One certainly would question that. Giroud chops it up and out of play, and now another discussion. Are we going to see back-to-back -back delay of game penalties against the Flyers? And I believe that's what right now Dvorsky is saying to the bench, and they are disagreeing with it. Well, it's pretty clear. I mean, if... Uh, if the puck goes out of play and you were inside your own blue line. Philadelphia County, two minutes to lay a game. Now we'll give it, we'll show it to you. It's pretty clear. There's not a lot you can argue with that kind of play unless it's deflected off of somebody. And that is not the case as you saw the chop by Claude Giroux. And he is not happy. I don't blame him. It's a tough, tough call. It's a tough penalty. But it's in the game, and I don't know when I've seen a team get stung by this twice in a row. Now there'll be a five on three. Just trying to put the sandwich up off the glass, and, and he's good at doing that. Carlson in to keep the puck alive. Simmons is back out now. It's a five on four. Carlson down low to the corner. McCulloch tries to turn it back to the net. It's blocked. McCulloch. Side of the net couldn't get a shot through. Now trying to hold it in. 
Carlson comes across. He can't do it as Simmons with a nice job forces the puck out of the zone. Not recognized by the fans as well. They like to cheer players who show a lot of energy. And we talked about the Boo Birds in this building. And that is exactly what the Flyers have not been showing in the earlier home games. Spezza. What's wrapped up couldn't get a shot or a pass away and again teaming him this time just clears it back down ice. And he steers it to Carlson taps it ahead. Here's Spezza to the line with speed. Carries it in. Drops it back puts it right on the skate though of Ronaldo and that makes for another easy clear for the Flyers. Not sure that Ronaldo would not be the kind of guy that will have called for it. Trying to fool the veteran Spezza. To the line. Puck is deflected in. Torres goes in to get it. Mason out of the net. Torres steals it from him. Now in the corner. Here's Bobby Ryan. Ryan. He's down low to Torres. Torres turns it back to the point. Phillips across to Carlson. Carlson to Phillips. Phillips. One timer and it is swallowed up by Mason. As Torres didn't get as much as he wanted on that. Gave him kind of a muffin in the chest and easy one for Mason. And Mason needs an easy one because it looks like he's not really sharp as I told you about two pucks that he lost off of the Jason Spezza stick here. He gets beaten to the puck in the back and he got, he got lucky on that one. The tourist wasn't able to get better control of the puck and make a play to the front of the net still while Mason was in behind the net. 33 seconds to go in the Ottawa power play. And off the draw again the Flyers clear it. In the first 18 games of Ottawa's season, they did not have more power plays than their opponent in any of the games. In the last two games, they have had more power plays than their opponent in both of the last two games, and they are on their way to their third straight game, but they just can't get it together. You know, Dean, it makes me think about maybe there's just too much ice time for certain guys, and I mentioned that against Columbus, Eric Carlson had 11 minutes and 9 seconds of power play time. And yeah, he did score a power play goal, but it was 4 nothing at the time at the end of the game. There may be, you've got to manage your ice time better. Not maybe, I know you do. Even when you got the man adva advantage. Just because you got the man advantage doesn't mean you can arbitrarily go and play for two minutes. You've still got to be better. Greeny winds, fires, rips it into the blocker of Mason. And the puck is cleared back out and down again by Ronaldo. Flyers have killed it off, and that brings some applause. As the fans here in Philadelphia appreciate the penalty kill, icing the call, and a face-off back down on the Senators' end. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. All I got to say is give him the puck early. Bobby Ryan showed some good moves earlier. Getting a real good opportunity on Mason. That coming off the left wing. That would put him on his forehand. Here's Gustafson through the middle. Loses the puck. And then Tourist does. Shen goes cross ice with Hugh Simmons on the wing. Cowan tries to hem him in. Takes him into the boards. Angles him off. Now along the boards. Ryan trying to get it out. Can't. He's with Cavalier. Centers the puck. But puts it right on the stick of Clark MacArthur, who tries to lay it ahead for Turris, who just couldn't cut in around strike. Up his back of the net, chopped away from Bobby Ryan. Turris comes in. And the pin Shen. And make that strike up on the way. The Cavalier through center. To the line. Puck is dumped down inside the zone by Braden Shen. Everybody heading off. And so is the goaltender Mason. A power play is on the way, holding the call, and a face-off and a power play for the Flyers when we return. This period, brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Kyle Durs in the belly box for holding. You had to know this was coming. Not a major hole, but whenever you've got your arms like that, you're really giving the referee an opportunity to try and even things up. And the Flyers have just had a couple of penalty killing opportunities that they were successful on. And now the Senators are going to try and see if they can do the same thing while well, shorthanded. 
Cardinal slides it across. Light man coming in. Leonard makes the save on Voracek. Allen tries to tip the puck away. Can't do it. Back down low. Giroux goes down to shortstop the puck. Back to the point. Teaming him with a shot. Save is made by Leonard. Back in front again. Giroux scores! Leonard down and out of it. And the Flyers lead 1-0. I'll tell you what, this is not a lot of surprise if you've been watching your Flyers. They have scored two power play goals in the last five power play opportunities. Voracek comes in all alone. Now you've got to the front of the net. Take a look at what happens as Leonard's got to move way to his left, trying to recover for this shot, and then dives to try and get to the Giroux shot, and he is just not able to get from west to east that fast. Now for Giroux, that's only his second goal of the season, incredibly enough. But that top line has been producing of late and gets it going for him now. Mason makes the save as Luke Shen and Colin Greeny have a disagreement about who gets to stand where. Now let's take a look. The move to the left here by Leonard getting set up, and that is just one dandy play by Voracek. It really is, because everybody is focused on Voracek. He's had a couple of opportunities for the wide side. What a play he makes across the ice to a wide-open Giroux that beats the goaltender Leonard. Could not get across in time. Just his second goal of the year and his first on the power play for Claude Giroux. To the line. Here's Braden Chen trying to come in. Neal tries to knock him off his path. And then he runs into Mark Mathot in the corner. Puck is loose. Zach Smith steers it ahead. Not the center. Colin Green gets the puck to the line. Slaps it ahead. Chris Neal has the puck pop over top of his stick. It's kicked back in by Mathot. Delayed offside. And the Flyers back up ice. Here's Shen. Braden Shen through the middle. Back to the line. Here's Shen. And offside the call is Le Cavalier is a step early. You know, the Flyers played that power play like they were really confident, right? I think you could pretty much see that, and that is because they have been really scoring. In the last two games, uh, the, in the last two, uh, last five opportunities, as I just said, they've scored on two of them, and they're moving the puck primarily to the middle of the ice all the time. That was a high-energy, fun power play for the Philadelphia Flyers. You can just feel that they felt good about themselves. Now coming into this game, four for eight in their last three games. So that feel-good thing continues for them. Back to the net. Here's Voracek with it. Turns it back out. Unchallenged. He walks out. His shot goes low and wide as Voracek, who scored two against Ottawa in the last game, was allowed to walk out of the corner untouched. Two on one back the other way. Bobby Ryan, MacArthur. Ryan with a shot. MacArthur makes the shot. Ryan looking for the rebound. Here's Ryan along the boards. And he gets turned around. Puck is cleared to the other side, and Mason tips the puck away. You got to put that save by Steve Mason as a very solid and timely save. Just getting lead on the power play goal. That is a save that helps your team right there. They preserve the one goal lead, even though they gave up the two on one. Strike taps the puck ahead. Here's Ronaldo into the zone. His shot, the puck's low and wide. Leonard gets across for a great save. Reed had a great opportunity, but somehow Leonard got across. Back to the corner. He's teaming it. Lays the puck to the corner. Mark McFaught comes off the boards with it ahead to Spezza, who banks it ahead, but not out. Here's Reed. Drops it back. McCullough picks it up this time. Floats it cross corner down to the flyer end. And that will do it. Just 23 shots in the period between the two teams and just one goal, that from Claude Giroux. Good opportunities at both ends. Both teams looking to get something going here as the Flyers get great opportunity 
right here deep in the zone and then a turnover at the blue line MacArthur goes in with Bobby Ryan takes a big shot and Ryan seconds away from getting a rebound and again it goes the other way 200 feet very exciting end to this first period. Well, a very busy night. Ten games in total. Five Canadian teams in action to get you updated on this one and all the hockey going on tonight. Let's go to Hockey Central at the intermission with Billy Jaffe. Here's your host, Jeff Merrick. Welcome back. Your first period scoring summary brought to you by the Metro Ford Dealers of Ottawa. Just one goal in the first. It was Claude Drew's second of the season that gives the Flyers a 1-0 lead. Senators, though, just slightly being outshot 12-11 by the Flyers. And this is a homecoming of sorts for Bobby Ryan. He grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, just minutes from downtown Philly. And when he arrived, he tweeted this, Welcome to God's country, Mark Mathot. What are the chances you bury a cheesesteak tonight? I can confirm that they didn't actually go for cheesesteaks. I asked Bobby Ryan what his favorite cheesesteak restaurant was in Philly, and he was hesitant to say so because he said answering that might start a riot, but he said Jim's. It's a strong cheese-to-bun ratio. Also, Bobby Ryan's parents are in, and he's expecting 40 to 60 friends and relatives. Well, now no relative, Sean, that don't go to Jim's. Cause choosing or selecting or at least saying publicly the right or wrong chili feet or cheesesteak place in Philadelphia is a very dangerous opinion to have. Here's Giroud to the line. Drops the puck low to the corner for Voracek. A teammate of Milan McCullough from the Czech national team. Bobby Ryan has the stick knocked out of his hand and actually runs into Eric Carlson as the cycle continues. Voracek sends it back to the point where he thought Grossman was going to be, but he no longer was. In a 4-1 loss Sunday against Columbus, special teams ultimately ended up being the deciding factor as Columbus had three power play goals in that game. The first period of this game also decided by special teams. Ottawa 0 for 3 in the power play. Philadelphia 1 for 1. As Greeny dumps the puck to the corner. Jack Smith and Luke Shen. Smith comes out with it. Bounce it back to the point. Driver gets it across. Cowan, his shot. That's knocked down. Loose puck comes back to the high slot. Back out to the center. To the corner. Greening tries to chip the puck by everybody. Doesn't work. Comes out with it the other side. Though feeds the puck ahead. It's tipped to the neutral zone. In the neutral zone now. Swept down to the line by Chris Neal. And that one whistled down as the puck was gloved ahead. So a faceoff comes outside the Philadelphia line. Well, if you look at the National Hockey League statistics, you're going to find that, that the Ottawa Senators lead the hit parade. 683 of 53, 653, and that guy, Colin Greening, on the left, is leading the Ottawa Senators with 69. I mean, Colin has really started to bring that up, his numbers up in the last few games, and it's been effective, because I tell you what, Luke Shen went back for the puck, and he bailed on Zach Smith, figuring he was going to get hit. Conker slides the puck ahead, Mathot to center. Tries to push it across. Couldn't get it through Couturier, who takes some action from McCulloch. Here's McCulloch. Steals it in the neutral zone. Tips it back in, but ultimately the Flyers have control. Here's Kimo Timonen. Slides the puck. Coburn to the line. Gives the puck away. McCulloch tried to tap it between his legs to himself. Would have had a breakaway, but the pass to himself failed. On the boards, Grant tips it back out to center. Here is Shen. Slips the puck across. Downey to the line. Goes to the wing. Here's Hall to the corner. Hall. Trying to turn the corner on Grant. Sends it back in front. Leonard makes the save. As Rosehill came in looking for some late stuff. Condor to the line. Dumps it to the corner. Grant goes to get it. Out of the net. Mason steers it around the boards. Condor comes in. Takes a glancing blow from Zach Ronaldo. There's a shot. Goes off the leg. Here's Ronaldo with it now. Ronaldo out to center. Panajab turns him around, puck in behind the net. Leonard steers it to the corner. Orvietsky drops it back to Phillips. Phillips out to center. Knocked down by Kondra. Backhands the puck in deep. Ottawa changing. Here's Turris now along the boards. Turris centers the puck. Bobby Ryan had it hit a leg before it got to him. 
Rosehill inadvertently making a nice defensive play. Ronaldo puts it back of the net. Giroux out the other side. Tries to drop it back for Hartman, but they can't connect. And now Borowiecki taps it ahead. Gets it back. Here's the puck to the neutral zone. It picked up quickly, and Voracek comes in. Phillips rifles it along the boards. Out to center now. Torres to the line. Spins. Tries to fire it across inside the zone. Here's Bobby Ryan. Got MacArthur. Cuts back. Ryan turns. By your score. No. Thought that was going to slip by Mason on the glove side, but then he caught it twice. Terrific individual effort again in this game by Bobby Ryan. He looks really good in traffic. Bobby Ryan's got 10 goals on the season. This is where he's at his best. He gets in a crowd. He seems to find the opening and an ability to get the shot away. That's why earlier in the first period I said, he is the guy you want to give the puck to early. Thought he'd beaten Mason on the glove side. It came off his glove, but then he caught it twice. Here's Zach Smith turning with it. Back to the point. Mathot sends one through. That's knocked down in front. The puck is cleared all the way back down ice. This will be an icing call, but the Flyers alleviate the pressure. That was a very well executed play. And I tell you, sometimes you just get some bad breaks. I mean, Colin Greening still doesn't have a goal this season. How likely is it that a shot from the point, you get your stick on it, and it ends up just, you knock it down. Watch the shot, Colin Greening, nice deflection, but goes straight down, doesn't even get to the net. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort to get that first goal, and maybe when Colin Greening does get his first goal of the season, things might start happening offensively for him. Eric Carlson is center, goes to the wing, hops off the skate of Carlson. Here's Zach Smith, his shot, blocker save from Mason, and he punches the puck back to center. The thought off the boards to the line, Greening tried to go across. Couldn't connect though with Spezza and Zach Smith, an interesting threesome here for Ottawa. Here's Braden Shen, tries to lay it to the high slot. Puck is knocked down, tip back to the boards. Simmons with it now, his shot knocked down before it gets to the front of the net. Zach Smith picks it up, out to center he goes. Jason Spezza playing as a winger on this line. Hmm. I do not believe I have ever seen this. Conacher holds it in, and now Spezza's normal line mates are out there with him as he turns the puck back towards the flyer end and dumps it in. To the boards it goes. Out to center now, here's Simmons. Floats the puck in. Here's Griva back to get it, Griva. Runs it around the other side. Tiemann gets there to keep the puck alive inside the zone. Pass scores from behind the goal line. It goes off Leonard and in from Couturier, and he picks up his first of the season. You know, I tell you, if luck doesn't play in sports, then you haven't played sports. We just talked about Colin Greening not getting a break on a good deflection. And here you get Couturier. Has not gotten the goal all season long. Frustrated in the first period by the good defensive play of Carlson and just sends one up the net. But if you remember in the first period, it had to be a dozen times when the Flyers, even without anybody in front of the net, they were just sending pucks to that area. That is something the Barubi must have been working on. Just get it to the high slot. Sooner or later, we'll get somebody there or something would happen. And certainly for Couturier, something good happened as he snuck one by Leonard. Here's Conduit. Sends it ahead and Zabanajet races to the flyer line. His shot goes up off the stick of Timonen and actually catches Timonen in the face. He will go back to the bench for repairs. Timonen now with two assists in this game. Kondo trying to slide it cross ice, didn't work. Borowiecki dumps it back in. The delayed offside call comes off as the Flyers get back to center. Grossman dumps it to the corner, he'll go and chase it himself. Now around the other side, here's Bobby Ryan. Out to center. Turris takes it wide to the line. Turris sends a shot through, that goes off a body to the far side boards. Giroux back the other way. Here's Claude Giroux to the line. Lays the puck in and the spin around chance 
doesn't materialize as Voracek just never really got in a solid shooting position. Bobby Ryan cuts across. Tried to hit Tourist in full flight. Couldn't do it. Side of the net. MacArthur digs it out. Tried to give it back to Mathot, but stolen away and at center. Jake Voracek dumps it in. Heads off on a change. Here's Bobby Ryan back in the zone zone to pick it up. Gives the puck away. Shen with a shot right on. And Leonard makes the save and holds on. A 2-0 flyer lead here in period number two. All right, thank you, Sean. Zach Smith in the face-off circle. It's up with Vinny LeCavalier. Of course, could not get his traditional number four jersey here in Philadelphia. But that one is in the rafters. Barry Ashby, of course, was number four. Jared Cowan falls on the play, and that forces Driver to come across ice and help out. Here's Zach Smith now. Out to center, Smith. He's taken down by Braden Shen. Power play is on the way. Leonard tries to get to the bench to get the extra man out. Neal is taken down behind the net. And that brings the whistle and a tripping call. And the Senators will get their fourth power play of the game. Well, the boos you might be hearing are not for the Flyers. They're booing the referee on this one. But Braden Shen has been probably the most complete flyer of late. Did indeed get his stick in the legs of calling of uh, Zach Smith and that certainly is a penalty. Now it's a question of whether the Ottawa Senators can turn this into a positive as two nothing deficit at the moment here in the second period time keeps ticking away. This is a great opportunity. Off the draw McCauley gets it back to the point. Here's Phillips now. Back to Carlson. And Couturier just stayed on him, knowing full well at some point the puck is going to come back to number 65, so he was never more than two feet away from him. McCulloch to the line, chips it in. Goes to chase it himself, runs it around the boards, back to the point. Here is Carlson again with it. Sends it back the other way. Phillips comes charging down the wall to keep the puck alive to the corner, out the other side. Spezza gets there to stop it up. McCulloch trying to hold it in. A swing, and it goes off a stick up and out of play into the stands. Well, Dean talked about Couturier going and staying very close to Carlson. Good reason for that. Obviously, Carlson plays a lot. Also, he leads the Ottawa Senators in power play points, leads the league in defense scoring. And Berube, the coach of the Philadelphia Flyers, has basically designated the young centerman as his best defensive forward. So why not have him on the best offensive player of the other team? Here's Phillips to the corner. Back to the point. Carlson again under tight coverage gets it across. MacArthur walks in. Scores! Clark MacArthur off the post and in. It's a one goal game. And you know, it's, as soon as I say Couturier, he is taken off the ice. Another, another line comes on to try and kill the penalty. And that was just a great shot by Clark MacArthur. But he's just given so much time. That's where the mistake is made. You see where Ronaldo goes running after one guy is basically out of position and therefore MacArthur has plenty of room and time not only get the shot out but look at what he does with Luke Shen using him as a screen really a very very well thought out play by Clark MacArthur scoring well, what the Sounders have to consider a very important and timely goal to get them back in this game. I was going to ask you Denny on the bench right now as a player put your player hat back on. Is it more important that you cut the lead in half, or is it more important that you got something positive out of a power play, a power play that has struggled back? You've got the whole candy store, Dean, really. You score on the power play, and you got yourself back in the game. That could be a major emotional lift. Greening along the boards. Still has it, hooked up. That's a bad angle, rips it at the net anyway, round the boards. Goes all the way back down ice. And you know, you take a look at the coaching uh, decision right after the power play goal is scored. He comes on with his most effective line in terms of being able to turn the puck up the ice and create pressure on the other team. So Paul McLean puts his Zach Smith line on. Here's Neal off the boards with it out to center. Neal gets it across. Zach Smith into the zone. Tries to find a late man. It just about got to Colin Green before it was knocked away from him by Hartnell. Huck hops up in the air. 
Martin will get some support as Ottawa is changing. Now the Flyers. Gustafson out the center. They turn the puck over. Spets it to the line, but Conacher got caught inside the zone and offside the call. Local sports on Rogers TV. Your community. Your teams. For the most local sports, watch Rogers TV. Again, little mistakes. I mean, Ronaldo goes way too much at Carlson again, needing to protect Carlson, but then it leaves a lot of space for MacArthur to not only get the shot out, but as I said, to use the defenseman Luke Shen, who had gone down and created a, a veritable screen for the goaltender Steve Mason, who didn't see the shot. Now Carlson will get an assist on this, will he? He does. He and Phillips pick up the assists on the goal. But even had he not gotten the assist, you could see how much attention has to be paid to Carlson while on the power play that Ronaldo overcommitted and gave MacArthur so much more time. Spets to the center trying to lay it out for a breakaway chance for Conacher as he was trying to split the D. And they couldn't get the puck through the neutral zone. He spets it to the wing. Jared Cowan gets to center. Fires it high around the boards. McCulloch waiting for it. Knocks it down with the skates. Strike to the corner to pick it up. McCulloch steals it from him but couldn't control the puck. And it's floated back out to center by Couturier. Takes a dead man's bounce in the neutral zone. Steered off the boards. Aiden Colburn couldn't get through the neutral zone with it. Sabanajad falls while trying to chop it to the line. On the big screen here in Philadelphia before the game, they do these player interviews. And today's topic was how you got the number you have. Colburn was hilarious. He said, well, when I got to Flyers training camp first time, the guy who I found out later was the equipment manager walked in the room and threw number five at me. So I've been number five ever since, and it's fine now. <laughs> I know you thought number five was fine. Well, mine had a bit of a story as well. As people in Ottawa will know, I wore number seven as a junior. All through, well, pretty much all through my junior career, number seven. And... Well, a veteran uh, war number seven. Up comes back in front, kick to the corner by Phillips. Back to the line. Braden Shen with a shot. Tipped in front, off the pad. Hartnell takes a swing at Borvietsky. Now everybody's on top of Leonard. Right now, Mason at the other end is skating out. <laughs> he might not want to come the length of the ice because this time around, the guy at the other end would not be an unwilling combatant. Outside. They'll all get up and dust off. We'll be back in a moment to Philadelphia here on Canadian Tire Senators Hockey. Welcome back, Dean. Danny, you guys were just talking about guys changing their numbers and how they came up with them, but how about Nicholas Grossman? When he came over from the Dallas Stars, his name changed. When he was at the Dallas Stars, he had just one N on Grossman, but when he came over, one of the Flyers staffers noticed that on his passport he had two ends, and that was actually the proper way of spelling it. And when asked why he just left it for so long, Grossman simply said, I was just happy to have a name, a jersey with my name on the back of it. So he didn't care one end, two ends. He was just happy to be playing in the NHL. <laughs> There's legendary stories about the few mishaps where in certain situations Wayne Gretzky jerseys were misspelled. <laughs> it happens. The amazing thing is Mark Gorbieski in the penalty box, as is Hartnell both for roughing. That's not the amazing part. The amazing part in his very short career, Mark Gorbieski's name has not been misspelled. It's been mispronounced a million times, but... Here's Carlson. Springs himself and his teammates. Tourist to the line with MacArthur. Leaves it for MacArthur to chase. Teaming and all over. Puck along the board. Here's MacArthur. Comes back off the board, back to the point. Carlson with a shot. Tipped on the way to the net. Turris couldn't get his stick free and falls down. Back out to center. Here's Voracek. Curls back into his own end. Ottawa changing. As the Flyers now try to weave their way back to center. Voracek to the line. And in. Loses the puck. Goes to the corner to get it. Carlson wraps him up. That's a digs it out, but it's stolen away from him by Giroux. Back to the point. Grossman to strike. Strike his shot right on. Leonard makes the save and holds on. You talk about strike and you talk about not scoring for the Philadelphia Flyers. That has been a big part of why they've had such a drought 
They went and got straight in the offseason. Remember, he used to play for the New York Islanders, a defenseman that can give you some points. And when you look at the makeup of the Philadelphia Flyers defense, that's really what they were looking for in the offseason. Get some guy to put up points. Well, Strait had not gotten the goal so far this year. There's a chance and a block as McCullough comes across and throws his body in front of that Grossman. Grossman, what you say Two ends, one end. Two. <laughs> Phillips now. Slowly back up ice. Lifts the puck ahead. Spezza couldn't get through the middle with it. The Churier was in the middle of the ice, camped out. Phillips lets the puck go to the wall. It was intended for McCulloch, drops it back. Stolen away by Spezza, now back the other way. Griva joins the rush, so does McCulloch. Spezza to the line, cuts in, cuts back, drops it back. McCulloch spins one in, misses on the backhand. Back to the corner. In behind the net, here is Strite as Ottawa changes. Out to center. Puck is dumped back by Couturier, back into his own end. Strike. Moves the puck ahead. Reed to the line and in. The late trailer is LeCavalier. Tries to take it wide. Now drops it back. LeCavalier. Trying to bring it around the other side. Carlson all over it. Turns it back. Carlson gets on him, stays on him. Puck comes free. Zach Smith skates away with it. Nice defensive job by Carlson to contain Vince LeCavalier. Back to five on five. A much bigger man. Backhand is swallowed up by Mason and he will hold on. Now well, Steve Mason as I said earlier he's uh, the guy that uh, has the glove on the right hand and I haven't seen really a lot of shots up in that area. Typical uh, somebody will remind you and I'm sure that the Senators have been reminded of the fact that he catches with the right hand. It's off the left of Mason. Let's just have a look at the possibility that Ottawa could face two righties in a row. Of course Minnesota's playing Montreal tonight. The Senators face Minnesota tomorrow night. And Josh Harding is a righty. So I suppose if he plays back to back games may well be the case with Baxter injured right now. Ottawa could see back-to-back right-handed catching NHL goaltenders. Here's Hall in the corner. Back in front. That shot was off the blocker of Leonard. Another shot knocked down by Leonard. Jared Cowan chips the puck off the boards but not out. Ronaldo winds and fires. That one deflected to the front of the net. Now flipped out to center by Sabanajad in the neutral zone. Grant comes over, jars the puck free. Here's Condra at the line. Into Zabanajad. Gets a shot away that goes off the leg of Luke Chen. Grant tries to lay it back along the boards for Zabanajad. Wanted to go to the point, but nobody there as Ottawa's changing its defense. Zabanajad spins in the corner until he gets a guy. It's Mathad who dumps it back to the corner. Condra back along the boards. Grant shot! And that one pinned along the boards. And Mason will hold on for the faceoff. A one goal lead for the Flyers here in period number two. The Philadelphia Flyers, in my opinion, have gone back to what they did back in the 70s. Just keep up with the puck at the net. Keep up with the puck towards the net. Even if you don't have that perfect pass, just dump it at the net. And then what happens is it's like a pack mentality. Everybody knows what you're going to do, so everybody else, the other four guys on the ice, are focused on going to the front of the net. And that's what we're seeing a lot from the Philadelphia Flyers under Craig Berube. Meltdown draw, everybody gets back up again. Spencer taken off the puck by Hall. Now floated to the corner. Here's Coburn to get it. Puck is cleared all the way back down ice. Nice farmer for an icing call, though, as Carlson back to pick it up. Carlson now. Slides it ahead to Mafat, bouncing the puck to center. Conacher tips it down to the flyer line and then teaming and throws it across ice. Here's Couturier back to get it. Out of the zone. Out again. Here's Spezza now. Lost the puck for a moment in his skates. Now dumps it in. Out to center. Couturier. 
Flips the puck high in the air to the Ottawa and Jared Cowan back to get it. Shovels it to the other side. Neal headmans the puck. Smith to the line. Greening his shot. And it took a quick bounce and nearly handcuffed Mason. This HD broadcast presented by Bell 5 TV. Watching hockey just got better. Well, Dean, do you want to know the rest of the story about yes. number five? Yes. Okay. So I get into the Islander dressing room, and I wore number seven, and trainers tell me that there's a veteran named Jermaine Gagno wearing the jersey. So I said, oh, that's too bad. So the next morning I come in, and number seven is on my stall, but there's a note attached to it. And Jermaine Gagno says on the note, give me $500, and you can have the jersey. But 500 bucks back then. Remember, I was making 17 a week playing for the Ottawa 67. So, I said, what's the next number? Yeah, they, seven's too expensive. They gave me number five, and that was it. Yeah, not much, not much more to it than that. Jermaine Gagne, in that same year, my first year, ended up being traded to Chicago in March. <laughs> that number came available, but by then I was already into the number five. And it took you, what, three years at that salary level to actually earn the $500? Back in front, <laughs> quick shot, save was made by Lennon. After taxes, yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah, I mean, that's great. It's yeah. different now. Here's Carlson jumping up in the play. Swings it across ice to the slot. That one thrown to the boards. Turris holds it in to the corner. MacArthur lays it down for Bobby Ryan, teaming and trying to pin him. Ryan off the boards. MacArthur back to the point. Mathot to Carlson. Carlson. Delays, cuts in, Carlson gets a shot away, that's blocked by Tiemann, sends it to the side of the net, that's knocked away by Mason. Here's MacArthur, all bound up by Coburn. Tries to sweep it back to the point, but instead it's stolen away and out to center. Down to the Ottawa line, Hartnell chugs into the zone. Not as quick as he was at one time. Here's a pass in front that's tipped wide of the net. Out the other side, centering pass, and Leonard gets a piece of that Claude Giroux blast and deflects it up into the mesh. That'll leave a bruise on the old shoulder, but that's a big save. And that is a head shaker for Claude Leroux, or, uh, Claude Giroux, because from that position, when he gets as much steam on the shot, Claude Giroux is figuring that he's going to score. This is some say, but you know, the simplicity of Robin Leonard's style is what I think makes it interesting because he doesn't have to have any acrobatic saves. He is big. He is just a big, big man and doesn't have to play to, with too much energy. He gets his body and his bulk in front of shots. Out to center, Condra shovels the puck to the line, nearly connected with Grant to the corner. On the board, Giroux sends the puck around. His board check on the other side, leaves it there. And the Flyers break it up, down the right side, into the zone. Trying to cut to the net, the backhander by Strike knocked away. Here's Zibanejad. Feeds the puck, and Grant now to the line with Condra. Grant cuts in, drag, slides, his shot, kicked away by Mason. Condra in the corner. Grant tries to center the puck, it's knocked down front of the net. Condra trying to win it back. Here's Voracek now. Puck is sent to the high slot. Grant couldn't get a shot away as Voracek and Zibanejad met. Long lead pass. There's a shot right on. Save is made, and Leonard swallows it up and holds onto it. And again, you can tell by the style of that save, not a lot of movement. This gets the big body in good position. And right there, I dare say, I was not in Voracek's position, but I'm sure he didn't see anything other than the Senators logo. Leonard well out of the crease. A soft win out of the corner with it. Here's Mathot. Follows the puck down. He steals it. Tries to drop it back. Here's Reed now. Mathot recovered. Got back quickly. Out of the corner. Quick shot. Blocker's save. As again, Leonard took that high shot. Downey. Back along the boards to the corner. Here's Reed. Poked off his stick. McCulloch trying to get there. Team in gets there first. Back of the net. Downey. Out the other side. Centering pass. And unable to get a shot away was Couturier. Coburn with a shot. That one doesn't get through. Back to the corner. Downey sends it in front. Puck is trickling to the front of the net. Leonard trying to get a handle on it. Can't. McCulloch will skate it out of danger. McCulloch to center with Spezza. McCulloch 
Cuts to the open side. Spets a one-timer right on. Save is made by Mason. Conacher gets a stick in there. And now Colburn takes him to the corner. Gives him a face wash. That move not sponsored by Proactive. Comical in a sense because Colburn's about six foot five. <laughs> and you can see the difference in height, but Conacher not backing off at all. He is just welcoming the confrontation with that big defenseman. All right, the play left side of your screen, you see Conacher getting uh, into uh, the goaltender, and now the rest of the play was Conacher punching upwards. I'd have to jump to hit him in the jaw. Yeah. There's Conacher coming in. You know, a few games ago, you saw Zibanejad play on that right wing, and he actually scored a goal, and I think the coaching staff is pretty much looking for somebody who will prove himself enough to be the top six forward, and right now, the auditioners are, I think, Conacher and Zibanejad, and Conacher may have the lead. His feistiness is something that certainly looks like it's welcomed on that line. Let's go down to ice level. Here's Sean. Thank you, Dean. Make sure to tune to the next Canadian Tire Senators hockey as Ottawa travels to Carolina to take on the Hurricanes. Coverage begins Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and you can catch it on Sportsnet Sens. Zach Smith in the face-off circle. And he gets Eric Driver to a spot that he wants him. Gustafson off the boards. Can't get it out. Zach Smith now. Le Cavalier takes the one-handed chop at him. Now goes to lean on him. Zach Smith pokes the puck through to Greeny. Greeny to the corner, but it hits the linesman. Smith in to get it. Here's Zach Smith out the other side. Plays it to the point. Driver. Back to Zach Smith. Driver. Goes to the wide side of the ice, thinking he may get it back. As Greening is there, and now more pushing, shoving, except Greening this time is going to not accept it and gives Luke Shen a couple of reminders that he's allowed to stand where he wants to stand as Shen is getting pumped by Colin Greening, and now Shen tries to turn the piston back the other way. Greening, though, continuing to throw the rights, and Shen is not enjoying this. He's saying, please, give me a left. Colin Greening feeds Luke Shen... A little late evening buffet. Well, you're starting to see much more emotion in Greening's play. I talked about the hitting. Uh, Senators are tops in the league. And Colin Greening is uh, the tops in terms of hits on the Senators, surpassing Chris Neal only by a couple of hits. But his emotion, the way he has come in on goal and started the hits, has just been showing to increase more and more. And... Like Dean said, he just had enough at this point. You know, I, I'm not going to take any more. And he throws, you know, a mid dozens of rights. Uh, a mid-fight recovery by Luke Shen, but the punch count was, was lopsided at the beginning and was lopsided at the end as Luke Shen took two or three times more than he actually gave in that one. Carlson fires it to the net. Here's Tiemann off the boards. Clears it through center back down ice. Carlson gets to the line. It's whistled down and a faceoff again in the Flyers end. Now 51 seconds to go here in period two. Now Bobby Ryan shows that's good. Scoring is uh, something that's in his repertoire, but it's not easy. Just consider this. Uh, Sidney Crosby has two goals in the last 12 games. Malkin's last goal in Pittsburgh 15 games ago. Not easy to score goals in the National Hockey League. Bobby Ryan feeds Turris, but it's too far. Back in front, it goes off the skate. Ryan gets back to it. Blues puck set it. Oh, what a save. MacArthur comes across, but Mason got back, recovered, and made a huge save. That is an incredible save by Steve Mason. Really, reactionary save. And you push off one leg and get to the other, the other side. That is a huge, huge save. And he has made a couple of them. Right there. This is, he wasn't even set for that. That's a terrific reaction by Steve Mason, who, by the way, made a very, very key save in the game on a two-on-one break when it was a one-nothing lead by the Flyers. That back in the first period. So Mason 
has been playing very well as is told by everyone here in Philadelphia and we're seeing him make key saves here to keep his team with the lead. Philadelphia points in five of their last six. Mason a big reason for that. It's Carlson backpedaling to his own line in the final 20 seconds of the period. Carlson gets to center fires the puck in. Mason out of the net plays it around the boards himself. Hall out to center with it in the final 10 seconds of the period. Works it into the Ottawa end. Leonard sends it back along the boards himself. Reed tries to center. That's knocked down and that will do it for period number two. Flyers up by a goal after 40 minutes of play here at the Wells Fargo Center. Coming up after the break, Hockey Central at the intermission to get you tuned in to what's going on in the NHL. Your second period scoring summary brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Sean Couturier's first goal of the season made it 2-0 for Philly, but it was Clark MacArthur that cut the Flyers lead in half with his fourth. Flyers are shooting the Senators 26-25. All right, thank you very much, Sean. As we get set to go with period number three, Clark McCarthy with the only Ottawa goal right now to start this period. Colin Greening and Luke Shen in the box after their little dust-up near the end of period number two. A dust-up one by Colin Greening, rather handily, actually. Third career fight in the NHL for Colin Greening. The other two, one against Derek Joslin, the former 67, who at the time, I believe, was with Carolina. The other one with Ottawa native, Mark Frazier, who I believe at the time was with New Jersey. I have to double check that. I'm not sure. I, I think, think you're was, right. don't think he was a Leaf yet. I think he was still with New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And now this one with Luke Shen, who hates Ottawa. So all three with <laughs> Ottawa. <laughs> Ottawa connection. Yes. You just kind of assume that he spent time with the Leafs. He probably doesn't like the sound of these. Back in front, Hartnell. Couldn't get the rolling puck to settle down as it popped off the stick of Kyle Turris on the exit attempt. Now Voracek back along the boards. Hardman feeds it back to the point. Strike winds, fires, gloved down by Leonard, and he holds on. Now all of this got started uh, actually by Claude Giroux making a pretty desperate play to keep the puck in the zone. He, he did it by knocking it off the stick of Kyle Turris. So the Ottawa Senators working on their breakouts over the last couple of weeks have been able to get out of the zone pretty good this year. I mean, it looked good. And then the end result of turning the puck over is that shot, but an easy one for Leonard to handle. Off the draw again, back to the point. This time, though, it hops on straight, so he just wheels it back to the corner. Despite the fact that Mark Strait is now 35 years of age, still expected to play for the Swiss team at the Olympics. Lob to the corner. Driver goes in to chase it. Leans on Braden Shen. You're trying to differentiate between the two brothers. Braden Shen is currently the Shen whose face doesn't hurt. Back to the corner. Here's Zach Smith. Along the boards. Back to the corner. And now here's Simmons with it. Just floats it back out to center. It's knocked down. Neal. Wraps it back and Jared Cowan goes wide side. Carlson, both teams changing. Carlson lays the puck to the corner. Here's Coburn to get it. Pollock out in the way. Spezza tries to feed the point, but it hits a leg. Couturier feeds it through the middle and out to center now. Teeman and gives it back. Passes too far. Slides by everybody. Down he picks it up. Spezza knocks it off his stick. Gets it back. Side of the net. And the puck is deflected just wide. In behind the goal. Here's Couturier. Spezza stays on it. Back to the point. Coburn with a shot drifting. Bounces off the pad of Leonard. Tienan comes in to keep it alive. Along the boards now. Spezza loses the puck at the line. And the long drifting shot is gloved down by Leonard. And he will hold on. Molson Canadian invites you to watch the game from your Sens Army headquarters. Go to OttawaSenators.com for a list of locations including these fine establishments. Now Robin Leonard in goal has already what does he got? He's already got 24 saves on the night as the Ottawa Senators are 
game by game of trying to get better at limiting the amount of shots allowed on the goaltenders. In the neutral zone, here's Harden with it. Just quickly checking Twitter here, Denny, and of course we know Twitter's already right. Chris Gillum is telling me the Greening fought Frazier last year, so it was as a leap. If we believe Chris, and why wouldn't he? From his picture on Twitter, looks very believable. I don't remember it myself, but Normois. This is a very good hit here. When you step right up, Borbieski steps right up and takes the momentum away from Claude Giroux, who had really had some good momentum coming across the blue line. Of course, with a goal in the game, Giroux's all pumped up. Zach Smith takes a puck off the boards, couldn't go anywhere with it. Now tries to steal it back, gets it away from Ronaldo. Zabanajad dumps it down ice. Here's Neil to chase it. Neil gets there. Grossman takes him into the boards. Now Zach Smith tries to come through the middle with it. Neil is bulldozing his way back. Driver with a shot. That one low and just wide. Ronaldo off the boards, trying to bounce it ahead. Does. Here's Rosehill to center. Rosehill dumps it down to the Ottawa end, peels off on a change. And here's Griber now. Out from behind his own net. Out to center. Zach Smith down to the flyer line and in. He's hooked up, loses both the puck and his balance, and there will be a penalty call here. Hooking will be the call as Smith is hooked to the ice. Ice level, here's Sean McKenzie. Thank you, Dean. Sometime tomorrow the ice will come out and the hardwood will go in here in Philadelphia as the Toronto Raptors come to town to take on the 76ers. That game is tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch it on Sportsnet 1. Now, well, Zach Rinaldo is not happy about the penalty call, but there you see with a stick in the midsection, he lets go. Thinks that's enough. Not so. Cross-ice, Mathot winds, fires, redirected over the net, back and scores! A rebound goal from Kyle Turris ties the game. This is incredible how this went. The really good play was the hard pass to Mathot. Once the shot goes wide of the net, it comes back, and I think Turris had to hit it out of the air on the backhand. And there it was. Big, big goal for the Senators who tie it up. You can see how the puck went on the back of the boards and came back towards Turris, but bouncing. Oh, pretty much. That thing was bouncing. He pretty much took it out of the air. And for Kyle Turris, hadn't been on the board for a while. He gets his fifth. This is a big goal for the team as well as for tourists tying this up. Only thing is just the way the hockey gods work, Danny, but the first three power plays that Ottawa had in this game did not look very good at all. Now they've scored on their last two power plays to tie it up. Carlson lead pass for Spezza just misses, but Spezza in deep enough to ward off the icing call. Now here's Reed ahead to center, Colbert. Carries it down to the line, gets a shot away, gloved down by Leonard, and he holds on. Tourist from Mathot and MacArthur has tied this game at two. Well, one of the major keys of the game was for the Ottawa Senators to be able to get the power play some life. And that it has. And for Tourist, his fifth goal of the season. You know, I tell you what, Bobby Ryan was standing there and Did a pretty good job of staying in front of Steve Mason. MacArthur now with a goal and an assist in this game. As the puck goes to the corner, here's Grive off with it. Grive gets to center. Fires the puck in hard. Takes a weird bounce, and that one whistled down. A face off back in the neutral zone, as I believe it may have gone off the glove of a player on the flyer bench. You know, Dean, he asked me in the second period whether or not a power play goal has it affected various ways for the team. Well, when you look at how this has come out, the first power play goal made it 2-1. Flyers have not scored since then, and the game has really shifted in terms of momentum, where the Senators seem to be more comfortable in period two, and here they come out in period three, got a power play goal, and now the momentum has really shifted on the Senators' side. It's up to them now to keep it that way. 
Neal comes in and drives Grossman off the puck. Flyers get out, but not under control. And the Sounders now have the puck inside their own end through the middle. Puck is given away by Cowan, but coming back, Zach Smith takes the puck away from Simmons. And out the center. Here's Neal. Dumps the puck to the line. That one knocked down. Neal swats it back to his own end. Condra has to go back and fight Braden Shin for it. He gets a weak shot away. Two giveaways by the Senators have not had to pay for them, but in front, you do not want to give the Flyers too many chances to get it to Claude Giroux. Here's Carlson now. Falls, but gets the puck back out to center. Giroux back to the line. Voracek poised for the shot. Giroux cuts back. Tries to feed the point, but it hops over the top of the stick of Gustafson all the way back down ice. If you want to see whether or not the the team wants to keep momentum, uh, the Senators, that is, you're going to see the pursuit increase. Breaking in, Hartnell falls. Carlson dives him to the corner. Still manages to center the puck and gets by everybody back out to center again. Dump down inside the zone. Leonard to the corner. And Turris out to center. Ryan cross corners the puck into the flyer end. Off the boards. Teaming it. Downing chops it along the boards. Flyers can't get it out. Back to the point. Borvietsky with a shot. It's gloved down by Mason. And he will hold on as Bobby Ryan comes cruising through down at the penalty box. Shin and Greening are released from purgatory after their five minute wait from their fights. And every goal is a lot of things that happen, but take a look at the whole overload on the right side of the ice. If that pass by Clark MacArthur is not a bullet pass to Mathot, the Senators risk having a shorthanded odd man break going the other way. Spetsa wins the draw. McCulloch, though, couldn't get a shot away. Flyers fortunate that Colburn had decided to come up high off the faceoff, and that took away the chance for McCulloch to get a shot off quickly. Here's Conacher now. Cycles it back to the corner. Spets off the wall. He turns back. He's taken in as Hall won't let him head up. Penalty call is on the way. Tripping will be the call against Conacher. And the Flyers will go back to the power play. That's just the reality of what's going to happen here these next 14 minutes. They're not going to be easy as this game is going to be looking for a winner. Not much doubt on that. Even though you drop the stick, it's not going to help. So the Flyers, who themselves seem to have found a remedy to their power play woes earlier in the season, are now back with a man advantage in the game tie. Drew falls off the faceoff. Here's Mathot, shorthanded to center. Tries to drop it back. Turris has to come back and play defense. He and Carlson are the men back. Late drifting shot. Hartnell comes in late to pick up the puck. MacArthur lets him go. Here's Giroux now. Everybody from the Flyers gets set up. On the side of the net, Simmons. The only natural defenseman on the ice is Kimo Timonen. Here is Timon. Walks in, lines, fires right on, save is made, loose puck. Carlson, nice through to get it, tries to clear it, and whips on the clearing attempt. But MacArthur picks it up, lays it ahead. Turris, shorthanded, doesn't have enough juice left to chase it. Now here's Horacek, weaving back to the Ottawa line and in. Loses the puck, he's spun to the ice by Borvietsky. The puck is cleared around the boards and back out by Grant. As Horacek. Gives the hairy eyeball to the down low referee, Dan O'Rourke, who was, he thought, responsible for not calling that penalty that he thought should have been called against Borgiatsky. In all honesty, I was certainly expecting a call to be made as well. The chariot of the line heaves the puck to the corner. Goes off the high stick of Spezza. That brings a whistle and a face off to the left of Robin Leonard. Well, whichever way you look at this play, whether, you know, you, some might say that uh, it was just an interference call or maybe it was a bit of a help by Voracek embellishing the play, something probably or most often is called on that play. 
Nothing was. He shot to the left of Leonard. Off the draw, Leonard making the save. Carlson snaps it around the boards. Gustafson gets there to hold it in. Here's Le Cavalier, flips it back to the point. Strike. Gives the puck away. Spezza. Bouncing it down to the line for McCulloch. McCulloch trying to turn the corner. Gets a great shot away. That's good by McCulloch at the end of the shift. Still getting that speed to get that opportunity on goal. Straight to the line. Drops it back. Flyers again. Get in the zone. The Cavalier tries to go wide side off the stick of McCulloch. Here's Gustafson now. Conacher is out. Calling for the puck. Carlson. Wanted to give it to him for the breakaway, just couldn't get clearly through. Grant to the line, leaves it. Carlson. Grant along the boards. Nicky moves, sends a shot in, tipped away by Mason. Here's Conaghy. Back to the net. Gustafson steers it away, and now Le Cavalier out to center. All alone, end of the ship. Braden Shin dumps it in. Condra goes in to get it. Mathot gives it back to Condra. And now the exit. Carlson. Gets to center, floats the puck to the corner, peels off on a change as both Hemathot and Condra all head off. Here's Hall, bringing it back out to center. Hall to the line with Couturier, gets a lane, takes it, gets a shot away. And Cowan gets the stick in the way. Greening along the boards, kicks the puck free, and Cowan now steers it back to the net for Driver. Runs it up the boards for Neal, who gets pinned, couldn't get it out. Turning back, Downing now, loses the puck. Coburn with a shot, blocker back to the boards by Robin Leonard. Greening off the boards, chips it out to center. Here's Coburn back to his own end to get it. Neal on him. Turns away, here comes Green. Puts the body on Coburn. I'll tell you, after Greening's fight now, and I'm mentioning Twitter, Twitter has blown up people sending me things, saying this website's wrong. Apparently he's had five fights, not three. Bobby Ryan delays, tries to stuff it in. Oh, what a save by Grossman. Give him a vote for the Vesna. Turris was all alone, 18 inches from the goal line, and Grossman makes the save. Back the other way. Grabber ties up Couturier. Here's Turris. Turris is going to have nightmares about that one. <laughs> no doubt. Here's Turris now. At the line, gets hooked up by Voracek. Puck was tipped back outside the line. The Flyers have to come back out. Back inside they go, cutting back to the net. Cardinal can't get there. Ryan off the boards, out the center, three on two. Ryan to the line, sweeps it across. Bobby Ryan gets it back, then loses the puck as he's hooked. Back the other way, three on two come the Flyers. The lead pass, Voracek turns, fires it in front. Cardinal couldn't reach it. Back to the point, Tiemann loads it up, his shot. That's knocked down in front. Turris back the other way. How much gas could he have left in the tank? Not much, but he's got Clark MacArthur out there. He still has a little bit left. Arthur tied up. See a Mark Strike get in there. Zabana Jeff leaning on Hartnell. Puck comes free to the other side. Spezza waiting for it. Steers it back to Phillips. Back to Spezza. Wines, fires. That goes off a leg. Back the other way. Tiemann to the line. Tries to lay it in for Simmons, but he lobs it right to Leonard, who holds on. Tied at two. It could have been a 3-2 Ottawa lead, but a big save by Grossman. Hardest working sounder brought to you by Mark. Ready for this? Well, you know he gets ice time, but that play on Couturier right at the beginning of the game was big. And again, Carlson has shown he's moving up the ice and creating opportunities. This one as good as it gets on the power play goal by MacArthur. Brought it into a 2-1 game. There you see him on the puck at various areas of the ice. And again, eliminating Couturier's opportunity in front of the net. Right now, Danny, they're down in the penalty box. One of the referees, Paul Dvorsky, is on the headset. They want to look and make sure that Grossman wasn't in the net when Turris' shot hit him. Now, there's number eight. Look at the feet. Ooh. It went on both feet, didn't it? It did. And so where were his feet is what they're looking Check at. Check the right, the right foot. It may have gone inside. Yes, it did. That is in the net. That is in the net. Let's look at the overhead here. We'll see if yeah. 
gives us a clearer view. He goes off the left foot of uh, Grossman and then the right, and you can't see it there, but I think there was a clear enough view from the other angle that they may just say it's definitive. They it may is. just say it's not definitive. I don't know. Let's have a look on this one. This is where the puck right there crosses the goal line. They clearly in. Yeah, the entire puck is yeah. across the goal line. Let's get our scoring sheets out because I believe yep. the faceoff that is set to go to the left of Robin Leonard, I believe, is going to instead be at center ice. And I, I am Kyle Turris has a second of the game. And I am so relieved because Turris is not going to have a nightmare <laughs> now. <laughs> Cancel the nightmares. <laughs> Let's have another look if we can. We'll see if the guys downstairs can roll it back again, just so we can make sure we can see. Yep. You have to see white paint between the puck and the goal line. Alan's not going to give us the white paint view we're looking for, but it gives you perspective as it comes back off his skate. The overhead wasn't conclusive. I think this next one is going to be the one that tells us, that shows us. Yeah, this one. Look at the right skate. And you can see uh, the puck is inside the net. And so because the goal was waved off immediately, it has to be definitive video proof that the puck was in the net. And I believe that that does indeed exist. Yeah, that's... There we go. This will be the definitive angle. And the puck is indeed right there. Uh, goes up one, backing it up, and there you go forward again. Well, see, then the skate is well behind the goal line. There's certainly, as one would say, it's not a gimme, but from this angle, it surely appears. And so that puck had to cross the goal line to hit the right skate in the back of the right skate of Grossman. Well, in the, uh, the two and two equals four debate, we often have this debate with the high stick deflecting in a goal because, remember, it has to be below the crossbar. This is the same kind of thing. If his skate is completely inside the net and the puck hits his skate, the debate is how can the... And there you see. Yeah, I mean, that, that looks really definitive right there, but blurred. But his right skate is completely yeah. in the net and it hits his skate, so... Let's see. Let's see. Here's Paul Dvorsky. Oh, my. So they are ruling that it yeah. was in not, it, uh, the video was not definitive. The ruling from the see, you can't situation make room in Toronto is that the video was yeah. not definitive. They must have taken the position that you could not assume because the picture just wasn't clear enough. And the angle did show the skate was at the back, but I guess they just can't assume the key being that it was not called a goal on the play. So now we can go back to him absolutely mm -hmm. having nightmares again about that. Yeah, again, nightmares are coming. Flyers trying to get something going off that fortunate call for them. Up to the corner, Spezza. Back in the net, Downey now, Downey. Trying to get away from Mapot to the other side. Spetsa chases his man on the give and go. Coming to the front of the net. Scores! Tiemann then walks in. Five holes, Leonard. And it's the Flyers who take a one goal lead. Oh my. Oh my. That didn't take long for the turn of events to be drastic for the Ottawa Senators and wonderful for the Philadelphia Flyers as for some reason Tiemann is thinking I'm an offensive defenseman and scored only two assists on the season no goals and there you're seeing the first goal of his season and a huge 3-2 lead for the Flyers after a non-call goal by Torres. Huge goal there, the first yeah. of the season for Kimo Timonen. So Kimo Timonen 
who is not a huge point producer, has a goal and two assists in this game. He has been a part of 100 yeah. percent of the Flyers' offense tonight. Team in from Reed and Downey. But he came in the game with two assists only. Simmons with a shot, knocked down, loose puck, second shot. That's not going to be there. Back in front again. Simmons shot, scores. <laughs> Tell you what, you talk about momentum, momentum swings. The pendulum has gone one way and gone hard in favor of the Philadelphia Flyers. The energy they've gained after the non-call goal by Torres and the individual play by Timonen, they are just attacking the net as a pack. And there you have si si Simons or Simmons getting the shot and the goal just seconds apart and all of a sudden it seems like a dominant game by the Philadelphia Flyers but yet dominance showed up in just over a minute of goal scoring huge momentum swings in this game and you're right Denny the pendulum has swung all the way across to orange Back to the point, Gustafson throws the puck to the corner. Comes free, Grant through the middle and the puck to center with it. Goes to the wing, here's Zabanajad, gets his balance, fires a shot in, and it trickles off the pads of Mason up into his glove, and he will hold on. A two-goal lead for the Flyers here in the third. Kyle Torres. Must have thought, for a moment anyway, that he had the game on his stick with that shot. Incredible bounce. And then, minutes later, Tiemann finds the lane, scores his first goal of the season. And then the attack by the Orange. Simmons finds a loose puck, and he scores his third goal of the season. Now they have a two-goal two lead. What a change a venue this has become a quiet building has now become boisterous back to the point Giroux intercepts out to center Eric Carlson slaps it off the boards MacArthur goes cross ice here's Mafat snaps it to center Grossman knocks it down strike clears it ahead Voracek lobs it back to the Ottawa end received the official email from the NHL sending him past for a check couldn't get enough on it it's clear back out to Senate video review was inconclusive in determining whether Kyle Turris shot completely crossed the goal line therefore the referees call on the ice stands no goal Ottawa penalty call is on the way against the Senators high sticking will be the call and the Flyers now will go to the power play Well, it's as we uh, said, I think the NHL cannot put themselves in the position to make an assumption after the referee has made it, made his call on the ice. It has to be 100% conclusive. But what a bad turn of events for the Ottawa Senators. And now they're killing a penalty. Face off to the right of Robin Leonard. Yeah, it'll be a high stick call to Bobby Ryan. Inadvertently getting the stick up in the face of Hartnell. There you see 19 getting the stick. The Cavalier drops it. Reed line fires. That goes over the net. Here's strike. Back to Braden Shin. Knocked off his stick by Spezza. And Reed you know, they gave it away to Spezza. And does lose the puck to McCulloch, but he can't break on it. Here's strike. Back the other way to the Cavalier. Throws it back to the net. Kicked away by Lennox. Here's Downey now. Borbievsky gets on him. Centering pass. Reed double clutches his shot. Misses low. Here's Strike. Back along the boards. Downey in the high slot. Here's Reed coming down the backside. Strike to Reed. Reed tries to drop it back. Knocked down by Grant. And the puck is cleared out by McCullough. Here's Grant back in the Philadelphia end together. Grant tries to cut back. Backhander. Mason makes the backhand save. Here's Grant in behind the net to Condor. Back in front. Grant turns, fires. That one doesn't get through. Jared Cowan 
Tries to swap the puck to the corner. Good shift by Graff. Showed some pretty good hands going in on goal. And the Michigan State standout. At the center now. Here's Giroux. Goes wide side. Simmons down the wing. Phillips backs him off. Round the boards. Hartnell can't reach it. Tiemann in from the point. Tiemann one goal, two assists, five shots, three block shots tonight. Good work by him. Here's Turris coming in. Taken down on the way to the net. Runs into Mason. It's going to be a penalty shot. <laughs> Kyle Turris will get a chance to get the goal that was taken away from him just moments ago. Now there you see the uh, Kyle Turris trying to get away. And there's no doubt that Timon and uh, pulled him down. And not getting a play on net by Turris makes that call relatively easy for the referee in that it is a penalty shot. So Turris with a chance to make this a one goal game. And they come to their feet here at the Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo Center. Here he goes. Mason way out to challenge. Turris forehand, backhand. Mason makes the save. You know what? The Flyers have scored four goals, but Mason has made some really key, key saves. With five minutes remaining here in the third period, a goal by Turris could have made this game very interesting. Still can be, but that is a big save. Another one for Steve Mason. There you go. Never really had him fooled. Colburn goes wide side. Flyers try to go out of their own zone. Grant hooked up. Couldn't get his stick free to play the puck. Now Voracek to center. Goes wide side. Giroux with a shot. That goes off the glove of Leonard. Pondra along the boards. Ties up Hartnell. Bobby Ryan falls. Flyers. And another penalty. For in. Another penalty yeah. call is on the way against Ottawa. Holding is going to be the call. Flyers back to the man advantage when we return. Anything for hockey brought to you by Molson Canadian. Diehard fan and proud partner of the Ottawa Senators. Somehow die hard is the word that sticks with me when I think of how he would do anything for her goal right there. Kyle Torres, that goal was taken away and was not able to beat Steve Mason on the penalty shot. And that is just how quickly things change. Flyers come back and score back-to-back -back goals 23 seconds apart. And you go from a situation where you thought you had a one-goal lead to being down by two. Backside chance, puck is loose, side of the net, Simmons wouldn't have counted anyway as he tried to glove the puck in. But. Well, it's still sort of impressive, you know, I see Claude Giroux right there, had a great opportunity just to shoot the puck or make a play himself, and he's still looking to pass. Giroux back in front, couldn't set up Voracek, back along the boards, he's teaming it. To the corner, Mathot, ties up Simmons, puck is cleared. Back out to center and down to the flyer line. McCarthy picks it up there. Finds the late man coming off the bench. It's Spezza. Couldn't get a shot through. And she was kind of tagged partially. A glancing blow from Timonen as he tried to slide through the gap. You know, they don't play together as a, as a unit, right? They're not on the same line. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But Spezza's a right-hand shot. And he and and uh, MacArthur put the puck on the wrong side of him as he's coming in wide open, and it wasn't an easier automatic play for Spezza to pick up the pass. They saw to the right of Mason. Here's Spezza off the draw, tries to swing it back to the point, couldn't do it. Flyers back out to center. Gorbietsky knocks the puck away. McCulloch to Spezza. Spezza moves in, drags, slides, loses the puck. 
and Gustafson. Out to center. Braden Shen now fires the puck around the boards into the Ottawa and Downey on the other side. Knocked away back to the point. Strike. Through traffic looking for a tip that doesn't happen. Here's Gustafson now. In behind the net. Glad to poke it to the other side. Le Cavalier waiting for it there. Le Cavalier off the wall to the high slot. Sending pass. Here's Strike. His shot. Gloved down by Leonard. And he will hold on again for a face-off to his left. Well, the passing looks good by the Flyers, and they really do go east-west, try to spread things out. But if you're not going to shoot the puck quickly like Stride, hang on to it. You're giving the goaltender just too much chance to get across. And at that point, you don't even have a prayer. Robin Leonard easily gloving the shot by Stride. Back to the point. Colburn dishes it off. Down low to the corner. Here's Tiemann and hops over his stick back out. And the Flyers have to withdraw with 12 seconds remaining in their power play. Final rush with the man advantage for Philly. Ahead to center. Harton has it knocked off his stick. So he'll try it again. Back to the net. Flyers again trying to come up. Team and lets it go. Hartnell scoops it off the boards, gives it away to Neal, who just dumps it back in behind the flyer goal again. Here's Colbert. Back to even strength hockey, five on five. Borachek at center. Neal knocks him off the puck. Here's Giroud to the line. Sends a wrister in, easily gathered up by Leonard, and he holds on again. As we have a look at our game review brought to you by the Ottawa Citizen, presenting sponsor of the Sounders 2013-14 season. Good time to soar. How about that for Tiemann, who had not had a goal on the season, came in the game with two assists, gets the first goal of the season, plus a, a pair of helpers. Power surge, yes, the Ottawa Sounders did what they wanted to do, get some power play goals going, but it just wasn't enough. And then two goals in the third period have made a major difference in how this game is finishing in favor of the Philadelphia Flyers. 23 seconds makes all the difference in the world. Two goals separated by 23 seconds change the game. And you know, you can look at 23, at two goals in 23 seconds in the first, second, or third period. I've always found, and you know, it's not 100% accurate, but boy, is that a momentum changer. When one team can get two quick goals, oftentimes they can carry that to the victory. Leonard comes up to play the puck away from Downey as the thought got all twisted up. Now to the corner, the thought. As Couturier takes him down, Spezza with the puck. Out to center. Here's the Banajad. Banks it along the boards for Greening to chase. He puts Luke Shen into the boards. Leonard goes to the bench. Ottawa net is empty. Phillips comes in. Keep the puck alive inside the zone. Flyers. Long lead pass. Out to center all the way down ice. Oh, Icing that. waved off. Said it was deflected by an Ottawa senator inside the blue line of the Philadelphia Flyers. Green to the line, sends it hard around the boards. Ottawa net is empty, down by two. Back to the point, Carlson just tries to hold it in. To the other side, here's Spezza with it now. Back to the net. Green, back to Spezza. Spezza to the point, Carlson. His shot, through traffic, knocked down before it gets there. But ping pongs in behind Phillips. To the line and in, here's Bobby Ryan. Tries to give it back to Conacher. Simmons angles it off the puck. Here's Colburn along the boards. Puts it up into the mesh, and are they going to call this another delay a game penalty? I believe they are. Let's check in and find out what's coming up on Connected when we get done. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osman. Hey, Diener, holy busy night in the NHL. We hardly have time to do this update. Lots of highlights on the way. <laughs> Road to Rio was busy, too, and great, especially Cristiano Ronaldo. Back to you. Well, if you want to live in the realm of possibilities, Flyers got 22 goals in 23 seconds. The Senators are down by two. They've got 50 seconds of power play time because of this play as the puck goes out of the playing area. And that's a third delay of game penalty for the Flyers in this hockey game. Quite rare. It is not rare for the Flyers to take penalties. They average more penalty minutes than almost any other team. They're tied for 30th in the league. 17.4 penalty minutes on average per game. So it is not a rarity for them, but it is a rarity for anybody to have three of those in one game. 
Sanders control off the draw. Carlson. Spezza. Back to the box. That shot knocked down. Back to center. Ned is empty. Bouncing, skipping, and in. A 5-2 flyer lead with 35 seconds to go. Well, the Flyer fans have found their rally. They are no longer booing the Philadelphia Flyers who had three victories here in the early goings in 15. Well, no, I should say we're not playing very well on home ice. That's the bottom line. They were booed and one of the major motivations coming into this hockey game for the Philadelphia Flyers was publicly stating we don't want our fans to be booing us anymore. So Adam Hall gets not just his first goal, his first point of the year. Grossman gets the assist. It is both shorthanded and empty net as Carlson gets to the line and in. McCulloch tries to kick it to the net. Puck is free, bouncing. Scoop to the corner by Couturier. Conacher keeps the puck alive inside the Flyers' end. Swings it back to the point for Phillips. Cross to Carlson. Carlson carries it, tries to sweep it to the front of the net. Puck is cleared to the line. And out as Zibanejad couldn't hold it in. And that will do it. The Ottawa Senators falling in game one. Five nothing to these Flyers. And here in game two of the three game season long series, they fall five to two as the Flyers had three goals in the third period to win it.